This is what happens when you copy the aesthetic without understanding the design. And this is also why your Apple style animation sucks. But don't worry, I'll show you how to fix this in three easy steps. Fonts, spacing and motion. So let's start with the first one, fonts. Because most people get this part wrong. Apple uses San Francisco and it works. It's neutral, modern, super flexible if you use it right. This isn't about picking a fancy font, it's about using it intentionally. Set your size hierarchy and you can do this by opening up a simple text node. Keep your letter spacing clean and please stop making everything all caps. Also, you know that cool gradient? Let me quickly show you how that works. Mask your word, duplicate it, click on the layer that you still have open and change this mask to subtract. Add a four color gradient and bam. And you can even animate the four color gradient. Next, spacing. Because this looks like it was aligned by a toddler with a mouse. Everything's super close together, zero breathing room, and this doesn't feel minimalistic at all. Apple style design lives on margins. Give your layout space a breathe, use consistent padding, and you can use an eight point grid. That will make everything way, way easier. All right, maybe even the most important one one motion. This is where most people destroy the vibe. You're not animating, you're just pressing the keyframe button. So let's break this down. First, easing. If your keyframes are in a straight line, your animation will feel like one too. So you can use an in and out or a nice custom curve with a little overshoot. And in my opinion, this is like an instant upgrade. Next up, text animation. And here are some of my favorites. So I like the word by word animation. You do this by opening up a text layer, click on the arrow next to the animate text, then click on position. Now do the same for opacity, then open up this animator, open up the range selector and open up the advanced tab, change the based on to words, the shape to ramp up and the ease low to 100%. Now that we're here, we can change the position to be a bit lower than the text, maybe something like 25, opacity on 0%. And then to animate this all, we're gonna click on the stopwatch next to offset. I'm gonna set it to minus 100% and then maybe half a second to a second later to 100%. But you can also use basic cuts because you don't have to be scared to not always animate it. As long as the timing is right and you cut the word on the beat, it can look quite cool. And the last one, word by word with a twist. For this one, I'm gonna use the built-in preset typewriter. Again, open the text, open the animator, open the range selector and open the advanced. Change the base on to words. And now your words will pop up one by one. The only thing I want to do is go to P for position, set a keyframe on the position. And then every time we have a new word, we move the text. Number three, drag out your keyframes. Fast animation doesn't mean short keyframes. So drag them out to give your elements time to exist. Make sure there's continuous movement and let the animation breathe. For match cuts, motion needs continuity. So if something slides out to the right, bring the next thing in from the left. That's called a match cut. And you can do rotation, positions, and skills. I always just create a null, link my first element to the null. I'll create my animation. For example, pressing P for position, setting a keyframe, moving it to the right. And once this is done, I'm gonna link the layer that I want to reveal to the null. Then let's ease these keyframes by hitting F9. And basically where the movement is the quickest, I want to cut off the first layer. And I do this by hitting Alt right bracket. And of course, cut in the layer that we want to reveal. And I do this by hitting Alt left bracket on that layer. And again, you can do this to any motion. And then the fifth one, bounce. Bounce is great until it starts feeling like a trampoline. <laughs> so don't overdo this. I'm using a free plugin motion tools. I just select the layer that I want to bounce, press S for scale, click on scale, and then I click on the bounce icon. And then I keep the amplitude low, somewhere between 100 and 200, and the decay anywhere between 50 and 100. Again, don't overdo this. So here's the full transformation again, but now it feels intentional. It feels like it could have been designed by Apple, not someone that tried to copy Apple in CapCut, Canva or Paint. So if you follow these steps, your Apple style animations won't suck. And to make this even easier, you can have this project file, a three hour deep dive of Apple style animation and the opportunity of me helping you with your Apple designs by joining the Social Creator Club Pro. Link is in the description. See you there. And if not, then thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and then I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.